rate. Show that dy by the x is bigger than zero to start with. Um, we remember how we do this. To find dy by the x, we need to differentiate them in, in terms of what they're written in at the moment. So x is in terms of t. So we need to find dx by dt. Slightly unusually complicated this question in that it's not a simple differentiation bit. We've got a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule again, the second time in this paper. Um, so that would be v du by dx minus u dv by dx. So v times du by dx minus u equals 2 times dv by dx, all divided by v squared. And I'm kind of assuming that from core three days we remember how the quotient rule works and how to apply it. I, this feels like it needs to be simplified. The top line, what have we got? Um, we've got t, take away t, and we've got 1 minus 2. So the top line, I think, comes out as just being minus 1, and the bottom line is t plus 1 squared. Is that all right? Um, we've also got to find dy by dt. And actually, rather than <coughs> diving straight into the quotient rule with this, is it all right to think of this as being 2 times t plus 3 to the minus 1? Because that, I think, is going to make this slightly simpler. If we think of it as being 2 times t plus 3 to the minus 1, at the start of the differentiation section, we wrote a rule that lets us deal with that. That's going to be minus 2 times t plus 3 to the minus 2, times by 1, times by the derivative of the inside bit. And so we've got minus 2 over t plus 3 squared. <coughs> Question set, show that dy by the x is greater than 0. Alright, um, we've got dy by dt and dx by dt, we find dy by dx again, by using the chain rule. dy by dx must be dy by dt divided by dx by dt. The dt bits cancel out to leave us with dy by dx. So that is minus 2 over t plus 3 squared divided by minus 1 over t plus 1 squared. Um, how happy do we feel with the fractions here? If we're dividing by this fraction, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we're going to turn that fraction upside down. And I maybe wouldn't be inclined to write this line, but what we've just written there is the same as saying that we've got that. You're happy with these two things for equivalent. If you're divided by fractions, we turn over the one divided by and multiply. And so we end up with, well, the, the minus signs have cancelled out. We've got 2 t plus 1 squared over t plus 3 squared. In other words, we've got a positive multiplied by something that has to be positive because it's a squared thing divided by something that has to be positive. So that is greater than zero for all values of t. And we're happy with that. Is enough for that. Um, the mark scheme wanted you just to state that it is positive, state that the squares are positive, make something, some comment about how this is this is definitely going to be positive for all values. Um, as I think I would leave that completely cut. Okay.
Um, the next part. Sorry about that. All right. The next part says find the Cartesian equation of the curve, giving your answer in a form not involving fractions. All right. So what we've now got to do is take that equation and, and somehow get rid of t from it. So we've got x is t plus 2 over t plus 1. We've got y equals 2 over t plus 3. Um, okay. <coughs> we need to eliminate t. I, this, we could do it either way, couldn't we? We could take the x equation and try and get t equals from that. Or we could take the y equation and get t equals from that. I think it looks like it might be easier to start with to get t equals from the y equation. So let's work on that. That equation, if we rearranged it, we'd get what we do? We go y times t plus three equals two. So t plus three is two over y. So t equals two over y minus three. And that looks like it's a good start. So we sub that value of t into the x equation and we're going to have x equals 2 over y minus 3 plus 2 over 2 over y minus 3 plus 1. Now, this is actually the question set find the Cartesian equation of the curve. And at this point, we've done it. It's horrible. But we have got the Cartesian equation of the curve because we've got the curve represented in a way that doesn't involve the parameter at all. The question also said, giving your answer in a form not involving fractions. So that's where the rest of the marks are going to come from. Actually trying to get rid of the fractions that we've got here. Start We'll get rid of this uh, denominator, so we'll multiply both sides by that. That uh, actually is worth tidying it up first, isn't it? 2 over y um, minus 1, and that would be 2 over y minus 2. So let's start by multiplying by 2 over y minus 2. slightly more lines than I think I would if I was doing this on my own. But I'll multiply out that bracket so we've got that. We're aiming for an answer that doesn't involve fractions. We still have fractions in there. So having multiplied by the denominator there, we're now multiplied by the, the thing that's on the bottom again. Multiplied by y, giving us 2x minus 2xy equals 2 minus y. And I think we could leave it. You've got our Cartesian equation in a form that doesn't involve fractions. The so mark scheme for this has 2x plus y equals 2xy plus 2. That's pretty much the same as what we've got, isn't it? Um, it is. And it does say any equivalent function can be accepted. There we go. Hey. Yes. Can you have a